We're going through tougher times now uh, and we're very much uncertain of the situation uh, in the future. We see that the Swedish industry is still going strong, but uh, when we look ahead we think it will slow down. Uh, we will be affected by Europe, uh, by the war, by the German economy. Sweden is a small open economy, very dependent on trade. So what's happening in Europe will certainly affect Sweden. I understand, of course, the Riksbank's independent. I'll, yeah. I'll give you that. I'll, I'll say it before you do. Yeah. But higher interest rates are on the way here, aren't they? The Riksbank has been very clear that they will increase uh, uh, the rates. Uh, and I think most um, people in Sweden also calculate on that because we see the consumer index are very bad. People are expecting uh, tougher times. The problem in Sweden that is different to say the UK, US or other parts of Europe mm. is your unemployment is still high and you have high mm. inflation and you've got no... I mean you're the definition of stagflation. You should look at the numbers. You can measure unemployment and, and the, the status of the labour market in a different way. What's happening in Sweden is that almost everyone is on the labour market, seeking a job, trying to get a job. So thanks to childcare, elderly care, also women participate in the labour market. So that's why the numbers on the unemployment rate will be higher in Sweden than in most countries like the US that doesn't have the same uh, welfare system that actually provides for people to seek jobs. But you have one other issue which of course is what's happening with Russia, yeah. Ukraine and the decision to uh, seek accession to NATO. Mm. So 23 countries have now agreed. Mm. The holdouts, besides the, the procedural ones, the main two, Hungary and Turkey. Do you worry that either of those is going to really be difficult when they're the last two? What we've seen so far is that we have a record pace in this process. But of course, we've seen in history that sometimes uh, uh, it might be obstacles, uh, it might be delays, so we don't have a fixed timetable. We want to join NATO as fast as possible. I've been coming to Sweden for 40 odd years, so I, I, know, I know it quite well. What I see is this country, the, the decision to join NATO was so searing at one level, but necessary at another. I mean, you've, you've just jettisoned several hundred years of neutrality yeah. in months. I grew up with a family from Finland, uh, so my family actually has been, my, my grandfather lost his life in a war with Russia. Uh, so Finland and Sweden has been linked together for, for hundreds of years. Many people in Sweden are perhaps not happy with the decision, but they feel it's the right decision. And sometimes reality is nasty. Sometimes Russians act against Ukraine really makes people think. We can be next. We have to defend ourselves. And we do it better together with other European and American partners. Let's talk about the election. There is a very real issue before the Swedish people this time, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, the future, of, if you like, of their security through NATO. If the decision's been taken, but it's who you want to manage it. So I think the question of leadership will be very important. Uh, and I think we have today the most popular and trustworthy Prime Minister that we've had for a very long time in Magdalena Andersson. So I think with her experience as a Minister of Finance before, now being the Prime Minister, I think many people also on the other aisle of the political corridor actually respects her and trusts her. And if you look at where the Swedish social model will be, mm. I mean it's enviable at one level. It's expensive. Hmm? It's questionable, and it's me questioning it, whether you can afford it in the future. I would turn the question around. Can you afford not to have a, a welfare system where women participate on the labor market? Uh, you don't have a system that actually uh, retrain people in midlife because we see so much turbulent on the labor market now. You have to transform your education in midlife. Uh, so I think Sweden is uh, a beacon of, of transformation. Giving people actually security in change is very modern. So I, I would argue that political parties that want to challenge the Swedish uh, model in an election also takes a risk because the Swedish population likes... It would all be bad enough.